Just going to recap last week's work, okay, just for five minutes or so. Last week we looked at solving non-right angled triangles. That was the key, non-right angled triangles, okay, like the one you're seeing on the screen now. And to do that, we've got different techniques. When we're solving right angled triangles, as you know, we use the Sokatoa thing. I just put the mnemonic up here, Sokatoa. Um, for solving um, uh, anything we've got right angle in it and that's absolutely fine but that does not work those techniques those definitions of sine uh, opposite of hypotenuse and so on they do not work for normal angle triangles and that's why we need different techniques now last week I introduced you to the sine rule uh, shown here with the a upon the sine of a equals the b upon the sine of b equals the c upon the sine of c that kind of thing and we solved lots of problems last week using that equation. If you remember from last week's work, we used kind of any two parts of that equation at any one time. Um, if you look at the video from last week, you'll see that, that how we appro approach that. I also mentioned to you last week that you can turn that equation upside down, which is actually quite useful from a transposition point of view. You can actually write it as shown um, below there uh, as the sine of a over little a and the sine of b over little b sine of c over little c if you can remember that you can turn upside down that makes transposition quite easy okay and also remember uh, this is very useful that the three internal angles of our triangle notice the capital letters here for internal angles they always add up to 180 again that's a very useful principle we'll be using that again today in the work we're going to do now we use the sine rule when we're given uh, any two angles of the triangle and one side or when we're given the uh, two sides and the angles opposite one of the sides okay and that's when we can use it we, we played with that last week so there are conditions on when we can use the sine rule if you don't understand the conditions don't worry about it just apply the sine we'll just apply this equation on the left hand side here and just see if you can use it see which bits you need to use so don't worry about the condition necessarily uh, just apply the sine rule just tick off information you know about the sine rule and i'll tell you if you can use it or not what you'll find today though in the questions we're going to start with is that we won't be able to use a sign rule. We will not have enough information to use a sign rule. So we're going to use another rule. And that's where we're going to go into the uh, cosine rule. So this is the uh, second rule. We didn't use this in the previous lecture. Uh, today we're going to use the cosine rule and the sine rule. So we we'll recap in the sine rule as well today. The way I work with the cosine rule, because it's more complicated, you can see below it, so it's a more complicated e equation here a squared equals to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc multiplied by the cos of a. Because it's quite complicated, and it's also quite complicated to rearrange, I only use it when I absolutely have to. It's like having in your toolbox that really big spanner for those really tight bolts. You kind of only get it out when you really need to. Um, otherwise, you use your smaller, more manageable spanners. It's that kind of principle I use. So you'll find in the questions that I'll only use the cosine rule if I need to use it. I'll only use it once and I will drop back to the sine rule, okay, because I find the sine rule easier to manipulate. So we'll only use it when we need to. Now there are conditions when we use the um, cosine rule as there are when we use the sine rule. And the conditions given here is that if we're given two sides of a, a, a triangle and the angle between them so in this case if you were given say side b and c here on my little diagram and then capital a the angle at capital a between them that's definitely a cosine rule problem if you were to put the uh, sine rule down if i just sort of uh, put it down over here briefly the a upon the sine of a and uh, b upon the sine of b is equal to c upon the sine of c. That's our four sine rule. If I tick off information that I know from the question, well, I know angle A, so I could find the sine of angle A. I know side length B, because that's given in the question, and I know side length C. But can you see from the illustration there that there's no one part of that equation, no one uh, segment of that equation that I actually know everything of? So I cannot solve it. I've got sort of uh, too many unknowns, if you like, in that equation. That cannot be solved. And that's the kind of condition where you need to use the cosine rule. Okay, so you cannot use the sine rule there. We're going to have to use this cosine rule. And the other condition where we use the cosine rule, if I just highlight it here, is when we're given all three sides. If we were given sides um, A, B and C in our triangle, then there's no way we can use the sine rule because it means we don't have angle A, we don't have angle B, we don't have angle C. So we don't know any one part of the sine rule. So again, we've got to use the cosine rule. So when you're given all three sides uh, of, a, of a triangle and no internal angles, then you're stuck with the um, 
uh, the cosine rule okay and unfortunately the cosine rule is quite difficult to transpose I will show you that in a moment in the examples but to transpose it to find the angle A don't forget capital letters are the angles and lowercase letters are the sides so transposing the um, equation shown in yellow there on the left hand side transposing it for the uh, cos of angle A gives you this equation uh, b squared plus c squared minus a squared all divided by 2 multiplied by b multiplied by c and that's a chunky transposition that one that is not given in the assessment you have to be able to do that um, so again it's quite complicated when you need to use it it's not the easiest of rules to use but I'll show you how to uh, transpose it later on just bear in mind if you want to find angle a because that's cos of A above. If you want to find angle A, you'll need to use the cos to the negative 1 function on your calculator. All right, so just be careful of that. And again, we will look at this later on in one of the questions. It will, it will show, uh, require the transposition, and it will also require us to find the angles using uh, the formula. All right, so, so quite complicated uh, formula, the cosine rule. But we'll take it nice and slowly so you can build up your knowledge on it. And one final thing, again, I've mentioned this previously, but just mentioned it again here. This equation on the left-hand side is written in terms of a squared. So don't forget, if you wanted to find the actual lengths of side a, you would have to square root both sides. So if I wanted to find the actual lengths of um, a, uh, side lengths a in my triangle above, you would have to square root. All right? So don't forget that. Sometimes students forget that it's actually the uh, a squared the, the formula is written in terms of when uh, they actually want to find side length a so you must forget you mustn't forget to actually um, uh, uh, square root both sides of the equation I should say um, to find the final answer for a okay so that's, that's, that's um, important to remember and the other thing we can also do and again well we can look at this is we can write the equation shown in yellow the original equation that's what you get in the formula sheet we can actually write that instead of being in terms of a squared for example we could write it in terms of b squared so I could write say b squared equals to I'm just changing the symbols here so that b on the right hand side will now become a squared plus c squared minus 2ac multiplied by the cos of b so I've just changed the notation exactly the same equation really but I've changed the notation. If I wanted to find side length B, then I could write it in that format. And I could do the same for side length C as well. So you can see with this, it's a quite a complicated little equation. There's quite a lot in it. Its, it's use is not easy. Uh, even just plugging figures into the equation, you've got to be careful of your bod mass. The transposition is not easy here. And sometimes we need to actually change the uh, no, no, nomenclature of the equation as well. But anyway, we're going to look at this. That's what it's all about here. We're going to look at this in some examples, okay? I'll just mention this again. This is from the previous uh, presentation. Do you remember I, I said to you that when we're dealing with normal angle triangles, we can get angles that are greater than 90 degrees. So my 90 degrees shown here on my sine curve. When you're dealing with right angle triangles, you never, ever get an angle greater than 90 degrees. By definition, you can't have it. And that right angle triangle can only have acute angles. So all angles are less than 90 degrees. But when you're dealing with these normal angle triangles, you could possibly get an angle greater than 90 degrees. So when you take your inverse sine function, when you want to find your angles, don't forget there are two possible angles. We looked at this last week in the lecture. There are two possible angles. If you take the inverse sine of 0.866, that will give you 60 degrees on the calculator, or it could give you 120 degrees. If you take the inverse sine of 0.2588, your calculator will give you 15 degrees, but that could also be 165 degrees. We need to be aware of that in some of the questions. It might be because it's an obtuse angle triangle that we're looking for the second angle, uh, not the first angle. The calculator would give you, say, 30 degrees, but it might be that looking at the triangle, we're looking for the obtuse angle, so the angle we're looking for is 150 degrees. Again, we went through that last week in the previous presentation, so if you want to recap on that, go and look at the presentation on the sine rule. Uh, and we outline how we how we approach that principle. But again, I'll show you it when it when it crops up in the examples. Okay, so that's just a little bit of background based on what we did last week in the previous lecture. This week, we're going to look at these normal angle triangles. Similar kind of approach to last week. I'm going to be given some information. I'm going to sketch my triangle as best I can, label it, and so on, and then decide how I'm going to tackle it 
uh, uh, to solve for the unknown sides and unknown angles. So let's go for this first question. So it says in the question, in an acute angle triangle, all right, straight away I've got some information. Acute angle triangle, that means all the angles are going to be less than 90 degrees. They've labelled A, B, C for me. So in acute angle triangle with A, B, C, side length B is 6 metres, side length C is 8 metres. Notice the lowercase letters denote the side lengths. And the angle, capital letter A, is 42 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is try and sketch a triangle as best I can. Right? What does that triangle kind of look like? So it says it's acute, so I'm just going to draw it sort of like this. Try and show all my angles are acute. Okay, so a little sketch is always very useful with this kind of stuff. I'm going to label A, B, C that's what they use in the question so angles in a b and c and i'm given angle a in the question so this angle here i'm given that's 42 degrees so i'm going to make a note of that there so just taking information out of the question okay what else do i know in the question well i'm given side lengths b now don't forget the way we know, uh, denote the triangles is that's angle b there then side lengths b is opposite so they've given me this side lengths here so that's six meters according to the question side length b is opposite angle b and they've also given me side length c and of course that'll be opposite angle c so little little c is over here and that's eight meters so i've just taken the information out of the question there giving me the angle in two sides now if you go back to the checks we had on the previous page if you're given the angle and the adjacent sides two sides and the angle between them which we are here that's a cosine rule problem. If we put the sine rule down for this question, we will not be able to solve it. We will not have enough information to solve it. All right, so let's just highlight that. So we're given the uh, sides here. This is side uh, B is 6 and uh, C is 8. So uh, there's my two sides. And we're given the angle between them, which is this uh, angle A here, that angle in there. That denotes a cosine rule problem. Okay, so... Perhaps I should just put that down for uh, a bit of clarity, maybe. If I apply the sine rule, just to show you again that you cannot use it, it might just be worth having in your notes this. All right, if I tick off information I know, they've given me side lengths B, they've given me side length C, and they've given me angle A. So I cannot use the sine rule. I don't have enough information. I cannot use the sine rule. So that means I'm stuck with the cosine rule. And that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to put there, try uh, using the cosine rule. So here's a rule I've got to try. So I'm going to try doing that. A squared equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC multiplied by the cos of A. You do get that in the formula sheet. So I'd encourage you to look in the formula sheets and see... Uh, where that's given okay it's only in that format and if I look at the information given in the question can I use that one let's just sort of think that through for the moment well I'm given side lengths b and c so I've got side lengths b c so I've got b and c there and I'm given angle a so I've got everything I need there on the right hand side of the equation to find a squared okay so I can definitely find side length a now using the cosine rule so that's what I'm going to do here on the left hand side. I'm going to find, find side length A. Okay, using the cosine rule. So the way this is written, the way the question is given, I can just plonk my figure straight into the formula. So that's quite nice. So on the left hand side, A squared is equal to, now B squared would be 6 squared. Add to that C squared, which is, 8 squared and I'm taking away the 2 multiplied by this is that's what it means multiplied by b which is 6 multiplied by c which is 8 and that's all multiplied by the cos of the angle and the angle is 42 degrees that's not cos multiplied by 42 of course that's cos of the 42 angle that's a, a function in its own right there all right so question is just plugging that on your calculator now I'll let you plug that into your calculator and don't forget you're working out a squared first of all okay so see what you get when you work out a squared I get 28.658 so I just make sure you're okay with that you're working out a squared but don't forget you'll want to find side a 
So in a minute you're going to then square root that. And I get a value of 5.353 meters. Let's see if we all agree with that. All right, I got side length A. Now, now, if you go back to the, the uh, sign rule at the top of the page, can you see now that I have side length A, and of course I have angle A, because that was given in the question, which I needed to use the cosine rule. So now I could use the sine rule. Can you see that? I can go back and use the sine rule here to find angle B, for example. I could find angle B using the sine rule. So that's why I'm saying to you, when the, I'm using the cosine rule, I only need to use it once, and I'm going to go back to the sine rule and solve then with the sine rule. So I'm going to use sine rule now to find, in this case, angle B. So what we're going to do is use these two parts of the formula here, if you like. like right, now I can go back and I can use these two parts of my sine rule, okay, to solve for angle B. All right. And this is the approach we'll adopt in, in, in the questions. This is step two. Now find angle B using sine rule. We use the cosine rule once and now I'm back to the sine rule again. And I'm also going to use the inverted form here to make it easier to transpose. Um, so the format you get for the sine rule is as written above, the A upon the sine of A equals B upon the sine of B, etc. But if you can remember, you can turn upside down. I could actually write that as the sine of B over little b is equal to sine of A upon little a. And I've written it that way because it makes the transposition really easy. I can just multiply both sides by B and I've got my sine of B. So if you can remember that you can turn the equation upside down, it will reduce the transposition required. Okay, We did look at the full transposition in the previous lecture, if you want to go back and see how we did that. But it's useful to remember that you can turn this upside down, this equation. You've got to be careful. You can't turn all equations upside down. You need to be a bit careful with them. But this one you can do. All right, so if I do that over here. So therefore, sine of b in this case would equal to little b uh, multiplied by the uh, sine of a. And it's all divided by, in this case, little a. So it's just for transposition purposes, I'm writing it that way, trying to make it as easy as I can to transpose the equation. All I do now is put my values in to the equation. So let's do that next. So sticking the numbers in now. So sine of b is equal to, so what's little b? It's 6 in this case. And it's multiplied by the sine of a. So that's a sine of 42 degrees. And it's all divided by length a. And we found a was 5.353. Do you want to do the numbers on that? Don't forget that's giving you the actual ratio for uh, B. And I get 0 0.75. That's not the angle. That's the ratio. 0 0.75. You want to check that out. See if you agree with me there. 0 0.75. If you were looking at the sine curve here. If I sort of just get the sine curve over here. Don't need to worry about this. Just to sort of show you. This is the sine curve we had in our previous diagram. And what we've just calculated here is this ratio somewhere up here of 0.75 that's what we've got there and that will give you the angle when we do the inverse sign in a moment we'll get an angle there this is the angle axis on this side so the 0.75 is on the vertical this is the angle if you like here so to find the angle we're just going to do sine to the negative one on our calculator so if we write that angle b is equal to sine to the negative one of 0.75 and now we get the angle at 48.6 I get because that's degrees there there is a second angle of course if you take 48.6 degrees from 180 the second angle would be 131.4 degrees Okay, so that, there is a second angle there, but because we're told in the question this is an acute angle triangle, that's what the question tells us, then that second angle is not relevant here. All the angles are less than 90 degrees. We're told that in the question. So the angle we've got there of 48.6 is this angle here. That makes any sense to you. It's that angle associated with this uh, ratio of 0.75 there. Okay, so now we can find 
The third angle, easily now, I can find the angle C because I've got angle A, I've just calculated angle B, and I can find angle C from a 180 degree rule. So step three, to find angle C, and that will equal to 180 degrees, take away angle A, and take away angle B. So in this case, C is equal to 180 degrees, minus angle A, which is given in the question, that's 42, and minus angle B, we just calculated the 48.6 degrees. So angle C, according to my calculations, that's 89.4 degrees. Okay, so we've now solved the triangle, we found all the unknown sides, all the unknown angles, and we've got our solution. Just notice the process we went through in the solution. First of all, we found side length A using the cosine rule. Then we found angle B using the sine rule. And then we found angle C using the 180 degree internal angle principle. Just beware of that solution because that's the kind of process we can use in other questions. This is question 2C. So in triangle ABC, angle B is obtuse. So we need to be clear of that. Angle B is obtuse here. So if I draw a little triangle, let's just sort of sketch something. If angle B is obtuse, then it's sort of more like that kind of thing. So a little triangle there. Okay. We'll call this A, call this B, call this C. It doesn't matter how you label it. But angle B is obtuse. Okay. That's what it says there. B is obtuse. You need to be careful of that. Uh, what we're given in the question, oh, I see, we're given all three sides here. That's interesting. We've got all three sides now, so no angles given here. Oh, we need to do a bit of transposition in a moment. So let's label the, the triangle appropriately. If that's angle A here, then opposite that will be side length A. So there's little a, which they say is 14 metres. Also, we've got, they've got a side length B, so that's opposite angle B. So that little b there will be... 18 meters so side length b opposite angle b there and then side length c is 9 so side length c uh, angle c is there so side length c is over here okay so we've got all the sides in this particular case of our triangle and no angles but we do know that angle b is obtuse so we need to be aware of that angle b here is obtuse so that's given the question so if again if you try the uh, sine rule and again if I tick off information I know I know all the sides I've got side length a side length b side length c and absolutely no angles so I can't use the sine rule I cannot solve it because I haven't got one of those uh, fractions one of those segments of the formula known I can't solve it so I cannot use the uh, sine rule here to try cosine rule okay so when I look at the information given now from my cosine rule and I tick off information I know what do I know in this case well, I know side length A I know side length B so I've got all the A's and the B's I've got C's as well side A, B and C I know what I do not know is the angle A that's unknown so this is where unfortunately we're going to have to transpose the equation now okay so a little bit more complicated here the equation is written in terms of a squared equals 2 that's just a side squared equals 2 but I need the equation in terms of the uh, cos of a so I'm gonna have to transpose it here to find cos of a so I want cos of a to be the subject of the equation here okay so the first thing I'm going to do with this equation I'm going to remove b squared and c squared from the right hand side. I want to get rid of them from the right hand side uh, and bring them over to the left hand side. So how do I remove the b squared from the right hand side? Well, that's a positive b squared, a positive in front of it. So I'm going to subtract b squared from both sides. How do I remove the c squared? I'm going to subtract c squared. And that will leave me with then the negative 2bc cos of a. So my first step in the process of transposition is to subtract b squared from both sides so it disappears on the right hand side but it occurs as negative in the left hand side do the same with c squared i will end up with that so there's my first step in the process okay so subtract b squared from both sides subtract c squared from both sides 
But I want to find cos of A as a subject. I need that. And then from cos of A, I can obviously find angle A. So how do I get rid of the negative 2BC? Don't forget that negative is still there. It's negative associated with the 2. So it's still here. So don't forget that's negative 2 multiplied by B multiplied by C. And it's all multiplied by the cos of A. So I could on the next line simply divide both sides by the negative 2BC. So the next line could be written as a squared minus b squared minus c squared now, uh, dividing both sides and throughout by the negative 2bc and that leaves me with the cos of a so it's quite a complicated transposition that one and unfortunately you don't get given it all i would do now is turn the equation around therefore the cos of angle a is equal to the uh, a squared minus b squared minus c squared all divided by the negative 2bc and there's my transpose form now there's nothing wrong with that form and that form is absolutely fine but just to show you this in a textbook the actual form will be written like this this is mathematically the correct way to write it b squared plus c squared minus a squared all divided by positive 2bc in other words what they've done is multiply top and bottom by negative 1 to get that purple formula but there's nothing wrong with the formula we've derived it's just from a mathematical perspective it's a bit messy it's not very aesthetically pleasing um, in a textbook it will be shown as a purple equation over here i'm going to use our format because that's what we transposed so i'm just going to put the numbers now into this formula here for the cos of a so let's do that underneath. So the cos of A is equal to, so A squared in this case would be um, 14 squared. And we subtract from that B squared. B squared is 18 squared. And we subtract from that C squared, and that's 9 squared. It's all divided by negative, don't forget negative in this format, negative 2 multiplied by, and B in this case is 18. And that's multiplied by, in this case, C, 9. So that's just sticking numbers into the equation. My ratio I get is 0 0.6451. So if you agree with that ratio. And again, don't worry about this. I'm just going to sketch on a cosine curve. Going back to what we did a few weeks ago. We, we plotted these curves in another lecture. Um, the cosine waveform looks something like that between 0 and 360 degrees. What we've got there is a ratio of 0 0.6451. So we're sort of here. So what we're doing is sort of drawing a horizontal line across until it hits our cosine curve and comes down. Then that's the inverse cos function. So to find the angle A, I get 49.83 degrees. Okay. There is, of course, a second angle, as there always is. As I said to you last week, there's actually a second angle, but it's totally irrelevant to this problem because it'd be greater than 180 degrees. So it cannot be uh, a valid angle in this particular case because obviously in a triangle, uh, all the angles add, add up to 180 degrees. So you can't have any angle greater than 180. So there is a second angle, um, but it's uh, totally irrelevant to uh, what we're doing in this problem. Okay, so that angle there is 49 Point eight three degrees. Okay, that's what we get from our calculator. Okay, that's given us angle A. Now we've got angle A and we've got all three sides of the triangle given in the question. Now I can go back to my sine rule. For my second step in the process, I'll be using the sine rule. I use the sine rule twice actually. So that was basically step one in the process. If we want to give it a little label, that was step one in our process to step two going to find angle B but we're going to use the sine rule. I'm going back to my um, sine rule above so I'm going to use the oh I've got a mistake on this that should have been this notice that should be B there by the way. Should be B there. Uh, so go back to my sine rule then I'm going to find angle B I've just found sine A here so that's sine of A there I can use the first two parts of the equation to find the um, angle B. So I'm going to write it down here. 
and that's sine of angle B upon little b is equal to sine of angle A. I've just found angle A upon little a. Transposing that, we need to transpose it for the sine of B. So sine of B is equal to B multiplied by the sine of A. That's all divided by little a. Okay. We've got the angle A, we just calculated it, and we've got all these sides in the question. So let's put the values into there. So little b in this case, from our information in the question, was 18 meters multiplied by the sine of angle A. I've just found that above. Sine of 49.83 angle A. And that's all divided by little a, which was given in the question. 14. My ratio now is 0 0.9825. And again, you don't need to really worry about this, but I kind of like to show you um, this is a sine curve between 0 and 360 degrees here. And what we've just calculated there is a ratio of 0 0.98. So don't forget the, the, the height of the curve is 1. So it's right at the top of the curve here. So 0 0.9825. So if we draw a horizontal line across here, it'll cut somewhere there. So that'll give me an angle here. But of course, it will also give me an angle here as well if I draw it along I get another angle here so I get the two angles between the 0 and 180 degrees okay so on your calculator now you need to be a bit careful here when you take the inverse sine so angle B is equal to the sine to negative 1 of the ratio 0 0.9825 don't forget you'll get two angles so my calculator gave me, first of all, 79.25. So, But it cannot be the solution for this problem because that's acute. And in the question above, it actually says angle B is obtuse. Okay, right from the beginning of the question, um, angle B here is obtuse. So that 79 degrees um, cannot be the valid angle in this particular case. So note, so in other words, the angle B we're looking for is 180 degrees. Uh, take away the first angle, which is the 79.25 degrees. So the actual angle we're looking for here. 100.75 degrees and that's obtuse so this is the one we want in this particular case the other one was not right for our problem but now I can find my uh, third angle quite easily now I've got my two angles I can just take them from 180 so the final step now in the process step three I found above angle A I've just found angle B so I can find angle C for my 180 degree rule and that's going to equal to the 180 degrees, subtract angle A, subtract angle B, so, and I get there, 29.42 degrees. Tough little question, that one. Okay, in this particular triangle, we're given um, angle B is obtuse. Okay, so I'll call this angle A here. Angle B, which is the obtuse angle, the sketch. We'll see how cool it is. It doesn't really matter how you orientate them, as long as in this case we make angle B the obtuse angle. We're given side length B, so little b here is given as 65 millimeters. We're given side length A, so A will be opposite angle A. So little a is over here, 39 millimeters. And we're given the angle between them, the angle C here is 30 one degrees okay so in this particular case then we've got angle abc we're distinctly told in the question we need to be careful with the questions that angle b is obtuse so that's my obtuse angle there we're given side lengths of b in the question so side lengths b will be opposite angle b so it must go there we're also given side lengths a in the question so side length a 
is given here and we're given angle C so that will be the angle here at C. Two sides and the angle between them were given, so that's definitely a cosine rule problem. So I'm going to go straight for the cosine rule here. But I'm going to write it down slightly differently because we're solving for, in this particular case, side length C. Because I've got angle C, I'll be solving for side length C, first of all. So let me just write this down for you. So from a cosine rule... And I'll put the original equation down. This is what you'll get given. A squared equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC uh, cos of A. That's what you get given, that format. But in this case, I'm actually given the angle C, not angle A in the question. I've got A, B and angle C. So I need to rewrite that equation, just change the notation. So I'm going to write it as C squared is equal to the b squared plus a squared minus 2 b a multiplied by the cos of c. So all I've done is replace the c's and the a's basically. And that's because of the information given in the question. They've given me angle c this time and not angle a. So I think I've got all the information. Let's just check the information that I'm given here. I'm given in the question. Um, little b, so I've got little b here, and I'm given a question little a, so I've got my a's and my b's, and I'm given angle c. I've got all the information I need, I can put that into the equation, and I can solve for ultimate side length c. So let's put the numbers in the equation, so c squared is equal to, I'm just picking the numbers off of the triangle, I don't use the numbers on that, but I get c squared is equal to 1400 approximately, but I want the side c So that will be the square root of 1400. I get 37.42 millimetres. They're using millimetres here. So just check that and see if you agree with that. Okay, and that's kind of step one there. I went straight for the cosine rule there. I can see it's a cosine rule. I'm given the two sides and the angle between them. That's a cosine rule problem. So step two. And I'm going to use the sine rule. So I'm finding angle A. So again, I can write it as sine of A over little a, because I've got little a in the question, is equal to, um, I could use now sine of C over little c. Okay, so using those two parts of the equation. I'll transpose it, because obviously I'm trying to find angle A. So sine of A is equal to, multiply both sides by little a, so that's A multiplied by the sine of angle c or divided by little c the side lengths put the numbers in uh, take the inverse sine on the ratio 0.5368 i get 32.47 on my calculator that could also be taking 32.47 from 180 degrees 147.53 but because we know in this case it has to be an acute angle then uh, angle a has to be the 32.47 for seven degrees all right so it has to be this angle here we cannot use the, the other angle this angle is not valid in this case but you always get two angles when you take the inverse sine as you now know but you look at the question context you can see it cannot be the second angle it's got to be the first angle of 32.47 degrees okay so now i found angle a in this case i can find angle b from the 180 degree rule again i'll let you do that and of course that's an obtuse angle there, which is what we're told in the question. It's an obtuse angle of uh, the angle B. So that's my 116.53 degrees. That's obtuse there in that case. All right. And that's it. We found uh, all the uh, unknown sides, all the other angles. So I want to move on now to practical applications. Okay, in question one here, we're asked to calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant of two forces, a 60 newtons and an 80 newtons applied, if the angle between the forces shown here is 75 degrees. We've got to state the direction of the resultant force from the 60 newton force. So I'm just going to draw the diagram for my own benefit here. This is actually called a force vector diagram. We're drawing one force and then adding the other force to it on the diagram. So if we start from zero, 
and 60 newtons we would draw normally to scale if you're doing a vector diagram and on the end of that we've got this 80 newton force which is 75 degrees to the horizontal so this is the 80 newton force I've drawn up to there 80 newtons now we're given the angle for this particular force uh, from the horizontal here the angle is given and that angle is 75 degrees what we've got to do in the question is find the resultant force. Now in terms of the vector diagram, this resultant force is from here to here. This is called the resultant force. This is the effect of the two purple forces in that one resultant force. So we need to find the lengths of the resultant force here, so I'll call it R here. And they also want the angle to the horizontal uh, for the resultant force. So we also need to calculate this angle in here, if I call it beta for the moment. We need to find that angle as well, given from the 60 newton force. This is obviously a normal angle triangle, so we might be able to use the sine and the cosine rule, etc. to solve this kind of problem. Let's see how we could solve it. So given the information in the question, I have two sides here of my triangle, but I have no internal angle. I only have this 75 degree external angle. However, we know from our previous work that if we have a horizontal line, and if we have a 75 degree angle here in this particular case then this angle over here this is the angle inside the uh, triangle that must add up to 180 when we add it to the 75 degrees so this angle here must be 105 degrees because the angle to the horizontal from here through to here is 180 degrees again that's something we've looked at in previous work so I know now the angle in here is actually 105 degrees. I'm going to draw it in my triangle. Now what I think I'll do is I'll redraw the triangle over here a little bit clearer uh, to show what's going on here. There's one side of the triangle, there's another side of the triangle, and that's the resultant force, as we call it, between the uh, forces. So I know now the angle in here is 105 degrees, and I've also got the side lengths here at 60 newtons, and I've also got the side lengths here is 80 newtons. Now if I'm given two sides and the angle between those two sides, that's actually a cosine rule problem for this triangle. So I could label this angle here if I want to, to give it a label, angle A, and then the opposite side to the angle would be side A. If it's side A, I want to find in this particular problem. If I label this side B, doesn't matter which I label B and C, but label that side B and that side C. And also label this side here little c and this side here little b. I now have all the nomenclature I need to use the cosine rule. So the first thing I can do is find directly the side length A, the resultant force. So I'm going to do that over here. So step one, find resultant force context of the question it's a force vector diagram and that's actually side length a it's actually side a in this particular problem as I've labeled my triangle so stating now the cosine rule is a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus the 2 b c and that's multiplied by the cos of angle a now I have all the information I need to solve that equation so a squared is equal to the b squared that will be in this case 80 squared plus the c squared which is 60 squared minus the 2 multiplied by length b which is 80 multiplied by length c 60 and that's multiplied by the cos of the angle a and we've calculated that to be 105 degrees that's the internal angle of the triangle. That gives me a value of a squared is equal to 12,845 but don't forget we want to find side length a so we have to square root both sides so a is equal to the square root of the 12,845 and on your calculator that gives you a value of 111.73 newton so that's my resultant force for this particular problem. But we also have to calculate the angle 
and that will be angle B in this particular case. We need to know what angle B is. We've been asked to find the angle uh, to the 60 newton load in the question. So we need to find that now. So now because I have all three sides of the triangle known and one angle inside the triangle, I can use the sine rule to find angle B. So step two in our process, we're going to find angle B. So I'm going to use the sine rule here so I can write the sine of angle B over little b is equal to, in this case, the sine of angle A. We know angle A is 105 degrees over the length A, which is just calculated as 111.73 newtons. So therefore, sine of angle B is equal to little b multiplied by sine of A and it's all divided by A. So sine of B is equal to 0.6916. So to find angle B, we need to take the inverse sine. So angle B is equal to sine to the negative 1 here of 0.6916. The ratio again from our sine curve. And that equal to 43.76 degrees. And you can check that on your calculator. So that's angle B calculated. So now we have the resultant force and we have the angle. And just for completeness, sometimes the resultant force is written in this format. It's called polar form, where the magnitude of the resultant force is 111.73, and the angle to the horizontal, in this case, is 43.76 degrees. <clears throat> but that's just a notation that's sometimes used in mechanics. In question two, we've got a roof truss. It has a span of 9 metres. It gives a span a notation in the question. The roof rafters are 32 degrees to the horizontal on one side and 41 degrees to the horizontal on the other side. OK, so uh, we've got to find the lengths of the rafters. So we, we're trying to find these lengths here. So if I sort of highlight them, we want to find this length across here. That's one rafter and this length across here. That's another rafter. And let's see what we need to do with this one. So again, I'm going to sketch it. Now, the span of the roof is 9 metres. So this is 9 metres across here. That's what they call the span. That's given in the question. We know that one of the um, angles um, of the rafters is 32 degrees. So I'll just draw this here, 32 degrees. And the other one is 41 degrees from the horizontal. So I'm just taking information from the question here uh, to get these angles. So that 32 degrees, I put that down here. 41 degrees, I put that over here. So my decision that, okay, and then I'm given 9 metres in the question, and 9 metres given, I put that down there. Okay, information out the question. Now I can label this triangle as I want to here, so call this angle A here, doesn't really matter what we call them, um, angle B here, angle C here, and so this will be side length A, and C in this case, and this will be side length B. Now, what rule do we need? Do we need the sine rule or the cosine rule? Well, because they've given us two angles, I can find the third angle immediately here if I want it. OK, so I would suggest here we're looking at the sine rule. OK, so first part in the question, we can find angle B. We're given two angles. We can find the third angle. So find angle B, which will equal to um, 180 degrees. Uh, take away angle um, A. Take away angle C. So in this case, that will be... 180 degrees, take away angle A, which is 32 degrees, take away angle C, which is 41 degrees. So therefore, angle B is equal to, doing the numbers on that, get 107. Okay, now I can use any part of the sign rule I like here, so um, use the sign rule to solve whatever I want to here. So put the sine rule down, A upon the sine of A is equal to little b upon the sine of B is equal to little c upon the 
sine of c. What do I know in the question? Just sort of give myself a little bit of a, a handle on this. I know side length b, and I just found angle b, that's okay. And I've got angle a, and I've got angle c. So I'm going to start, I think, by using these two parts of the sine rule. And that's what we did last week with the sort of segments. Those two parts, I'm going to find side length a first of all, and then I can find side length c. So my second step here is to find side lengths at A. So from A over the sine of A is equal to a little b over the sine of the big B. I can rearrange that equation to find A. So A is equal to little b multiplied by the sine of A and it's all divided by the sine of B. So I can solve directly here for the um, side length a. Put the numbers into that. Little b in our question was 9 multiplied by the sine of angle a. In this case I've labelled that 32 and that's all divided by the sine of b. And sine of b angle b in this case was 107. We calculated above. Put the numbers on that. I get 4.8 nine eight seven meters so that's the second side of the triangle and that's one of the rafters 4.987 um, meters now don't forget you cannot use Pythagoras theorem to find the third side because it's not a right angle triangle so we're going to have to use the sine rule one more time but it's the same approach here uh, to find side lengths c in this case So there's the calculations to find the lengths of the rafters shown in yellow and green. Here's another problem, a descriptive question where we have to solve the problem, but no diagram is given here. So I'm going to try and sketch my own diagram from the information of the question. Now we're told that three holes with centres A, B and C are drilled in a steel plate such that its dimension A to B is equal to 110 millimetres and dimension B to C is 85 millimetres. We're told that the angle ACB, that means the angle at C in our triangle, is 96 degrees, so it's an obtuse angle. We've got to calculate distance AC. So if I sketch a, a basic triangle from that information, I will have something like this, where this is A and this is B, and I'll have C somewhere up here, say, for example, put it there, and I'll have a line from there to there. Okay, we're told in the question that the distance A to B is 110 millimetres, so this is 110 millimetres here, A to B, and the distance B to C we're told is 85 millimetres, so this is 85 millimetres here. We know the angle ACB, that's the angle at C, is 96 degrees, so this angle in here is obtuse and it's 96 degrees. We've got to calculate the distance AC in the diagram so that will be this distance along here. That's the unknown. So if I now label my triangle with the appropriate symbols, if this is angle A, then this would be side A. So side A is 85 millimetres in this case. If this is angle C, this will be side C. So side C is equal to 10 millimetres in this case. And we're actually trying to find then side lengths B in this particular triangle. So I'll try the sign rule first of all and see if that will work here. So the A upon the sine of angle A is equal to B upon the sine of angle B is equal to C upon the sine of angle C. That's my basic formula. Now if I tick off information I know in this question, looking at the nomenclature I've used, I know side length A in this question and I know side length C in this question. I know angle C in this particular question here, so that's one part of the equation I do know. So I could actually find A directly from the sine rule. Once I find A, I can then find angle B, and then I can find side length B. So that's my process through the problem. So step one in this process, let's find 
the angle A. So I'm going to use these two parts of the formula, the A over the sine of A, that first segment. I'm also going to use the C over the sine of C. But I'm going to write them upside down to save transposition here. So I'm going to write find angle A. So I'll write sine of angle A divided by little a is equal to the sine of angle c over little c. This saves the transposition by writing the equations upside down here. Transposing then sine of a is equal to a multiplied by the sine of angle c. That's all divided by little c. I'm going to put my numbers into the equation now. So the sine of a is equal to little a, which is 85 millimeters from the question. That's multiplied by the sine of angle c, and angle c in this particular case is 96 degrees. That's all divided by the side length c, which is 110 millimeters. That gives me a sine ratio in this particular case of 0.7685. So again, if you just think that through for a moment, just for sort of background information, this would be my sine curve here, between 0 and 360 degrees. And on the vertical axis, of course, are the ratios. Maximum height is 1 here. We've got a ratio of 0.7685. That's the ratio. And if we draw a horizontal line across, it will hit the curve, sine curve, and that will give us an angle. We find that angle by using the inverse sine function on our calculators. So angle A is equal to a sine to the negative one of 0.7685. That gives an angle of 50.22 degrees. So this is 50.2 degrees. There is a second angle here, but we know that the angle we're looking for A must be acute because we've already got an obtuse angle at angle C. So we don't need that second solution in this particular case, although there is one. It doesn't work for our particular problem. So 50.2 degrees is the angle we're looking for, angle at A. Now I found the angle at A, I can quite easily find the angle at B, and then I can find side lengths B, which is what the question wants me to find. So the second step in our process will now be to find the angle at B. We know the angle at A and C now. So angle B, we get from our 180 degree principle. So angle B in this case will equal to 180 degrees. Take away the angle at A and take away the angle at C. So therefore the angle at B is equal to 180 degrees. Take away the angle at A, we just calculated the angle at A, that's 50.22 degrees. And we take away the angle at C given in the question, 96 degrees. So therefore B is equal to 33.78 degrees. So that's the angle at B calculated. Now we can find side length B by using the sine rule again. Okay, and the third step then is to find the side length B. So I'm going to use now the B upon the sine of B from our equation above is equal to C upon the sine of c. So there's my equation. So find side length b in this case. So from rearranging side b is equal to little c multiplied by the sine of angle b and it's all divided by the sine of angle c. Put the values in here, we know little c from above is 110. Multiply that by the sine of angle B, and angle B we calculated to be 33.78, so 33.78 degrees, and we're dividing that by the sine of angle C, so that's sine and angle C in this case is 96 degrees. Evaluating B is 61.5 millimeters. And there's a solution to find the side lengths B between holes A and C. 61.5 millimeters.
I believe you were question five here. We've got two holes drilled in a rectangular plate. The centre of a hole A is 50 millimeter from the bottom left hand corner of the plate on a line at 27 degrees to the vertical edge. And then hole B is 86 millimeters from the same corner on a line at 44 degrees from the vertical edge. Got to calculate the lengths of AB. So once again, I would encourage you to sketch a diagram and then try and solve the problem. Just to give you a hint here. So I'll leave you with that diagram and see if you can solve, given the information in the question, for the lengths AB. So I'll leave you also with question six here. Now on the diagram on the right hand side shows a jib crane which consists of a vertical post from A to B, four metres in length, an incline jib shown from B to C of length eight metres, and they tie between A and C. We're given the angle BAC and a obtuse angle here is given as 125 degrees, so that angle in there is of 125 degrees. We've got to calculate the angle of the jib and the length of the tie. So we need to find the angle in here of the jib to the vertical and also we need to find the length of the tie AC. Again I'll leave you with that question to you if you can solve that and find the angle and the lengths that are given in the question.